I know that there are some mixed feelings about Google Gemini out there on the internet. Imagine that, mixed feelings about something on the internet. But I actually do find it to be quite useful. I use it basically every day, usually multiple times a day. Here recently, one use that I've kind of been doing that is just, it's very novel. You're probably not going to need to do this, but for me, it's very useful. I can look at my YouTube members, and these are always listed at the end of every video, and there's about a hundred of them now. And what I could do is I could just type them all out, or I could click on this download button where it's going to just give me a file. But unfortunately, this is the file, so that really doesn't do me a whole lot of good either. So what I've been doing is I give Google Gemini this file and I tell it to order my YouTube members by uh, oldest to newest separated by commas. And in about five seconds, I have my list. I copy it, I paste it in at the end of my video preset. And there you go, I'm done. Gemini has been very useful to me in many different ways. Now they've also added something called Gemini Live which I must admit I've not really used much at all. What it is, is basically you trigger Gemini and you click this little button down in the lower right hand corner and you can just have a natural conversation with it. You ask it what you need to ask it, it's going to respond with a voice. You can actually interrupt it and divert the conversation or ask a follow-up question. And again, you just have a very natural conversation with Gemini at that point. What's cool is, when it's done, there will be a text transcript that you can go back to and sort of reference what was said. But to me, it just hasn't been something I've really needed to use. But I might be using it more now because they've added into Gemini Live some pretty cool new features. So now, once you trigger Gemini and you click on that Live button, you're going to see some icons down at the bottom. One looks like a camera and the other one looks like a little box with an arrow and what that signifies is screen sharing. Gemini Live now is fully multimodal. It effectively has eyes. You can either use the camera on your phone or allow it to just see what is on your screen as a reference point. Now, of course, that is something that I wanted to test. So the other day we were outside in the front yard and we were doing a little bit of yard work and we have a couple of rose bushes that we've transplanted from the backyard to the front yard. One of our new dogs just won't stop digging at those roots and she was going to kill these things if we did not move them. So we dug them up, we replanted them outside and they're looking, or they were looking, a little bit rough. A lot of them had, or a lot of the leaves were sort of brown and dead or dying. So I thought, let's see if Gemini Live with camera is going to be able to help us with this. So I fired it up, turned on the camera, and pointed at the one rose bush that was the worst looking. Now I did do a screen recording that I'm gonna show you. I didn't screen record for the worst looking bush that it reacted to, I feel like in the most accurate way. I think it was really visually obvious that this bush was in distress and I wish I had a screen record of that one, but I'll show you what I have anyways. But basically, it was able to help us quite a bit. We recently transplanted this rose bush and I've noticed that a lot of the leaves look like they're kind of brown and dry. Should we trim those off? And how far back should we trim this? Yes, you can trim off the dead and dying parts of the rose bush. When you do, make sure to cut at a 45 degree angle about one quarter inch above an outward facing bud. You should also remove any weak or spindly stems, leaving only the healthy, strong canes. With the first bush, I asked it how low to trim this thing back, and it basically told me that it looked pretty bad and that I should give the bush the opportunity to just focus on regrowing its roots instead. And to do that, you should cut it back pretty far, somewhere around half of its original height, maybe even a little bit lower than that. So I decided to do the same thing with the second one and just ask it what it thought. We decided to be pretty aggressive and cut it down to about half of its original height, maybe a little bit less than that. Do you think that's okay? Yes, that looks great. You've removed the dead and dying parts of the rose bush, which will help it recover. Since you were pretty aggressive with the pruning, you might want to give it a little extra care over the next few weeks. Make sure it gets plenty of water and consider adding some rose fertilizer to help it bounce back. Does it look like I was cutting at the correct angle? Yes, those look like they're cut at the right angle. You want to cut about a quarter inch above a bud at a 45 degree angle with the lower part of the angle facing outward 
away from the center of the plant. Now, what I should have done after it gave me advice was probably go Google that advice, find some videos, and see if that advice was accurate. I didn't. I took it at face value, and I just did what it was telling me to do. And I checked it afterwards, and I found a video online where somebody was transplanting a rose bush, and they cut it down about as low as we did when they transplanted this. So it seems like it guided us in the correct direction. But I would definitely advise you, like with anything like this, you should double check what it's telling you if it's something that is important. You want to double check it. These LLMs are trained off of the internet. And this is a situation where you can run into garbage in, garbage out. So again, double check it. But keep in mind, if the thing that you want to have Gemini talk to you about does not exist in the world around you, it exists on your screen. You can screen share and do the same thing there. It'll basically pop up and ask you if you want to start a screen sharing session. You can select OK. And whatever you're doing on your screen, it's going to be able to see that and recognize it. And you can talk to it about what's on your screen and ask questions in exactly the same process as what I just showed you. This is something that I don't know if I'm going to use it all the time. I probably won't use it that often, just like Gemini Live in general. But in certain circumstances where maybe you want to be hands-free or there's something that you think a picture isn't going to be sufficient with, you want to be able to move it around, show it different angles, I think that this could actually be fairly useful. I would love to hear from you guys down below who maybe have used this. What have you used it for and how useful was it? Now, I do want to quickly say one thing. I think that as you add more and more features to Gemini, you do run the risk of overcomplicating things a little bit. So after we did the first bush, my wife wanted to test it out on something else. So she holds the power button on her Pixel 9. Gemini pops up and she has no idea how to get to live or how to then get into Gemini Live with camera. I was like, oh, hit the Gemini Live button. She's looking at this and she's like, I don't know what button is the Gemini Live button. It, there's nothing about the button that appears that would tell you that it's Gemini Live. It's like some vertical lines. It doesn't really give you any sort of visual cue that that's a live conversation. I don't know what the icon should be, but that one is not super clear, at least not to my wife. So that's something that maybe Google needs to think about, making this a bit clearer for people so that they'll understand what this cool feature is. A well-functioning operating system or app doesn't bury features. It makes them obvious. It, it funnels people towards the cool stuff so that they can appreciate them the best. Nonetheless, it is here, and I think that it does work surprisingly well. If you have a Pixel 9 device, it is there for you for free. For all other Android users, you're going to have to have a Gemini Advanced subscription of some sort to access this. So definitely keep that in mind as a Pixel 9 user. It actually came with the year of Gemini <laughs> Advanced as well. So that is basically getting me this feature on all of my devices. So you may not have it on your phone if it's on a Pixel 9 or you don't have Gemini Advanced. But if you do, again, let me know how you have used this in those comments down below. If you want to help support this channel in a more direct way, consider clicking that join button down below, which will help make me a little bit less reliant upon ad revenue. You'll also occasionally get early access to some videos. And to see more content just like this, hit that subscribe button down below, guys. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.